Welcome, friends. This is episode 45 to Thrive and Aligned Healing Podcast. Uh, today, we're going to talk about belief systems. We're going to talk a little bit more about recognizing and identifying our belief systems and how to move through that process and kind of what that looks like today. We've talked about um, a little bit about identifying different belief systems and um, how to recognize, right, where those thoughts and belief systems come from. And now let's dive in a little bit more and trying to figure out how to move through them and um, change our belief systems. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm sure you guys are um, super intelligent. So you can figure out like, Whatever Carmen and I are usually talking about on the podcast is whatever we're currently dealing with in our lives, right? Because if we're dealing with it, other people are dealing with it. So yeah, (laughs) talking about beliefs. There's kind of a transition. Most people think that like, or we want to, we want to be able to recognize a belief that we have that doesn't serve us, recognize it and automatically switch it to the new belief. And then we get frustrated when we can't switch it, when we find ourselves going back to that belief, right? And once we kind of understand how beliefs and progressing through a a belief to a new belief works, I think it provides a little bit more space to give ourselves grace. Hmm. So kind of the progression is that you start in a place of unbelief. And you don't even recognize that you have this belief. Like we're, I'm going to use scarcity. Like a lot of us, because our society is saturated with the scarcity belief. And it's also saturated with the victim belief. We don't even know that we've adopted those beliefs. We think it's truth. Like the sky is blue. We don't have enough money, right? We feel like those are both very factual thoughts so we don't even see them as a belief and an optional right belief it's become this underlying this (laughs) this normal thought process right and if that belief system is something that we are um if it's running through our heads every day it feels like truth right yeah it feels like no why would i be lying to myself that seems silly Um, and so you've incorporated uh that belief system to be true and here's what the kicker is with it um so our brain like through all of our senses our sight our smell our touch our hearing um information is coming at us by the millions, right? Like we have millions of pixels of information. If you like, I, sometimes I like to compare our brain to the computer because a lot of us understand that now. So we have all these pixels and data or programming of information that's coming at us every second of our waking day, right? right. And if our brain took in all of that information, we basically would not be functional because it would, we wouldn't know what to do with all this information. So what our brain does is it filters. It decides what is relevant information to allow into our brain to process and do something with, and what is irrelevant information. And the irrelevant information, it kind of like goes outside of our peripherals, if you will. Like we don't really even see it or acknowledge it, okay? So if we have a belief that we believe, and we probably don't even recognize we have this belief, our brain is, that is what is programmed. That's the programming our brain brain is running on. And in that programming, then when we look outside through our eyeballs, right? Outside of our body and all this information is coming in, our brain is only taking in the relevant information that aligns with that belief. That's your filter. Yes, because it's decided this is relevant this is irrelevant so if you believe in scarcity when abundance comes into your life let's just use a stimulus check because most people got the stimulus check right (coughs) instead of seeing like your brain seeing the stimulus check coming in if you're if you have a belief of scarcity you see it come in as like this thing that you need for this moment because you don't have enough Mm -hmm. 
and that it's already spent or it's like, or you start being really graspy towards it, right? Because you don't have enough and here's a little that's come in. And that's how your brain is filtering that circumstance. But if you have worked through that and moved into a place of abundance and you don't really see the world from a scarcity place anymore, you mm -hmm. see it as how money always comes in and supports you. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, because it's filtering what is relevant that aligns with a belief you have and what is irrelevant, it will not really even allow into your brain. Right. Yeah. I think that's a great example because um, when that, when our belief systems um, have been part of that programming, it's kind of this automatic, you know, um, thought process yes. that uh, oftentimes if we're not aware um, kind of sneaks up on you, but you don't even know, right? Like, okay, there's a different thought process that I could engage in. Right. right. Yeah. Um, well, our brain is all about efficiency, right? Yes. It like that's how to as a to point B. Yeah. Like that's how, um, that's how we survive is efficiency to use as little energy as possible. And so what the brain can take and delegate to the subconscious is going to, and it's just going to, and when it's into the subconscious, it's automatic driving. Right. Right. Like a 16 year old, like driving, it takes a lot of brain power. <laughs> and then at our age, 30, 40, like, there's times where we drive and I'm like, I just remember getting into the car and now getting out of the car. I, like, I don't even remember how I got here. Yeah. And it's into the subconscious now. It's automatic. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's our beliefs. Um, true. Yeah. So when we get to a point where we're able to identify what our belief system is and where that programming comes from. Mm -hmm. right? um, and then we want to work on changing that belief. Hey, right? um, how, how do we go about that? <laughs> well, we go back to you first, the first stage, right? Which is that unbelief, disbelief. And part, that has min, uh, multiple stages within it. So like you don't even recognize that you have this belief system to you do recognize that you have this belief system to you see yourself feeding into that belief system even though you don't want to. Does that make sense? Yes. Right, like where you'll like, <clears throat> I'll just always go back to money. Um, cause it's, it's the most easiest example. Like when you finally have recognized like, Oh, I have scarcity beliefs. I don't want to have, I want to move into abundant beliefs. Right. And then you hear yourself saying, I can't afford that. Mm -hmm. Right. But then you recognize like, Oh, wait, I can't afford that comes from that scarcity paradigm. Yeah. So that's just like you're in that process of moving out of unbelief. And when the second stage <clears throat> then is being able to watch yourself choose which belief system, right? Like, cause you're, we call it the river of misery. So you have one belief that you're currently believing scarcity. Yeah. And then we look over the river on the other bank and we see abundance. Ah. Right. Yeah. And our brain, when we have two beliefs that we want to believe, goes into cognitive dissonance. Cognitive uh -huh. dissonance is what we call the river of misery. Because okay. you're no longer fully believing this old belief, but your brain does not fully believe the new belief. So it's just this very, um, you can feel it emotionally. It's very uncomfortable. Yeah. It causes a lot of tension, um, anxiousness, and um, sometimes fear within our body. So you can just feel like the tightness in your body when you're in this like river of misery. Mm -hmm. Because it's not for our, our primal brain, it's not safe. Right. We like clear, concise, efficient thought patterns. And this is not efficient right now because we're not allowing our brains to go back to the super highway of the old belief. And we're over here with a machete, like <laughs> whacking in the forest, trying to create this new belief. And it's a lot of work. So yeah. then our whole brain is like, this isn't how we survive. So it's yeah. very uncomfortable for us. And the reason it's uncomfortable is because our brain wants to go back to 
use as little, little energy as possible. Yeah. Let's just go back to our old belief. It's safe. It requires little energy. And if I can make you uncomfortable enough, perhaps you'll quit and just go back into this belief system. I see. Does that make that's, sense? A, that's an awesome analogy um, because you're exactly right. When we're talking about the neural pathways in the brain, right? Um, because our brain wants to be so efficient to get from point A to point B. Um, but um, I'm just now putting this together. But <laughs> <laughs> so when you're describing that programming, um, that's those that's your brain creating those neural pathways, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I always describe those neural pathways a lot like um, highways, right? Mm -hmm. Like your brain is creating um, a highway from that point A to point B. And the more you think that, um, the better that highway becomes, mm -hmm. right? Um, we Maybe we haven't talked about it in our podcast, but as far as um, pain memories right within our body it's the same thing mm -hmm. um is that we're creating those neural pathways mm -hmm. right so what you're describing by creating um by moving away from that highway and going and sort of trailblazing into a whole new area um with the machetes and and trying to start a different path um that's what we call neuroplasticity right? Where those neurons are always growing and changing, but you have to create uh, an in, uh, not an incident. You have to create um, an environment in which that neural pl plasticity will begin to occur, right? So you're creating new pathways um, for those neurons to fire. Um, so, you know, in a sense, you create new uh, memories, but you're creating new belief systems in this yeah in this manner yeah yeah <clears throat> and and so we move into this like middle phase right and this middle phase is like where we've already like recognized and we can start watching ourselves and yeah. seeing ourselves in this scarcity mindset and see when we're <clears throat> trying to function in a, a prosperity or abundance mindset right and in this phase it's kind of like sometimes you can easily flow into the abundance and sometimes you can't you know you're in the scarcity but you are let's say your thoughts go you're in the building of the bridge part yeah okay and so that's one belief at a time to get here most of us can't go to i don't have enough money i can't afford things to i am sufficient and abundant like <clears throat> your brain is like fuck that shit no like we do not have enough money. Like, look, look at the evidence we have, right? So this middle phase is where you're trying to train your brain to start pulling in evidence to prove that you are abundant. You're starting to train the brain to look and see relevant examples and, st and to stop getting rid of it and saying it's irrelevant, right? So you're having to focus and saying like, oh, this money came in and to pause and to be on and to have, create an intentional thought around it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like this money came in, like I'm so abundant. The right. universe is providing for me. Right. And those take effort right now, but you're conscious and aware. So it's a little bit, you can start doing that. And so you just, I say to get up in the morning and whatever thought your belief you're working on to tell your brain, okay, brain today, we're going to go look and see how we are abundant. I want you to go find evidence to prove that we are abundant. Yeah. Um, and so then we start creating these thoughts too. Like I can believe in the possibility of me being abundant. Mm -hmm. I can believe it's possible that I can be a person that lives an abundant life, right? So they're yeah. bridging thoughts. They're little tiny thoughts with a little tiny tweak right? to help move to, I am an abundant person. Cause your brain's gonna be like, no, you're not <laughs> like, right? So that's why we start like, I believe it could be possible that I could be a person. Yeah. Right. And in this middle phase, so the middle phase is a lot of work. 
right? It's not for the faint of heart because in the middle phase, not only are you working to let go of that and create bridging thoughts to get to this new belief, other beliefs are going to start popping up that are tied to that one. So for this same scarcity mindset, right? Um, <clears throat> a lot of times the other belief that's tied to that scarcity mindset is the belief about rich people mm. or the belief about money. Right. Having ha Wanting a lot of money is bad. Talking about money is bad. People like me don't earn a lot of money. People like me and where I come from aren't rich. As you can see, all these little sprouts that we have created around that belief system, which is really just evidence that we have gathered and to solidify that old belief system. Yeah. So then we start having to work on those. Okay. It makes sense that this, I mean, this is, this is a journey, right? Yeah. Um, that people are going through and you think, okay, to reprogram our mind, if your whole life you've been taught, you've been um, programmed or have formed these beliefs um, and because it feels like truth and you're trying to create something different right and reprogram your brain it's going to be a process oh yeah because um, you're trying to take that lifetime of of um programming and just change it yeah well i mean if you imagine around like again we'll go back to this process uh, this scarcity right um because this is on youtube now i get to do visual like you have spent let's say 20 years and this is how much you've evidence you have gathered in your brain to prove your scarcity belief, right? So why in the world would we expect this is hardcore evidence? Like, oh, okay, I don't believe this anymore. I'm just gonna get rid of it. You're just gonna throw it out. Like our brain is like, no, look, look, <laughs> this is 600 pages worth of evidence, right? Yeah. So the, the mental part is about seeing the truth behind those 600 pages are they truth is this factual okay right. brain we believe this is real let's go find factual evidence to prove that it's real and factual evidence is things that has can only be proved in the court of law or that five or more people can agree upon that they can say in all this evidence here in the court of law i would agree with you i promise you out of like that belief system all this this is how much is going to be factual out of all of this <laughs> because the rest of it is subjective interpretation right that we've just pulled through our filters and said this is relevant this isn't relevant right and there's very few out of that belief system that's actual factual evidence hmm. so then when we start looking at that belief system now that we're aware of it breaking it down does scarcity really exist? Does scarcity really exist in my life? How have I created scarcity in my life? Right? How am I blocking abundance in my life? Right? How, you know, and like, we know, or I believe and how I coach is our beliefs will always create us to have an emotion to take action and the action will create the results. Our beliefs will force us to create actions to create scarcity in our life because that's what we believe and our mind is not going to be wrong. Right. So then seeing how like taking responsibility of like, oh, my scarcity beliefs is what has created scarcity in my life. Mm -hmm. Scarcity isn't a phenomenon that just like exists. It's a belief that I took action out of and created scarcity in my life. Right. So when we can start providing enough evidence to our brain to show it like, this isn't real. This belief like doesn't have any validity in a court of law. It's willing to start letting go and being open to gathering evidence to prove the other belief is true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and so then you move into the final phase of where the new beliefs feels much more real than the old belief. 
mm. right? And there'll be instances, instances where the old belief will probably want to try to pop its head up, right? But the new <laughs> belief begins because we want to feel it. When you can start feeling abundance in your body, because you already feel scarcity in your body. Like if you can sit and meditate and think about how scarcity feels in your body mm -hmm. and like recognize that because it's a feeling now. And so when you can get in the third phase and you recognize and feel abundance, some of the woo woo, we call it vibration. You can feel the vibration of abundance. It's that energy, that feeling in your body. Right. Um, then you can start recreating it and also realizing it's coming from your thoughts. Right. And you're telling your brain, we are going to find evidence today of abundance. And you start seeing all the abundance and you start feeling it. And then that, that you move from um, the pathway with the machete to creating a new interstate pathway. And then that's how you, it will eventually move into the subconscious. And that's just how you filter and see the world then. Then that <clears throat> influences your actions. Yes. Yeah, that influences your action. So then um, when you're able to reprogram and change that thought process to uh, of one of abundance, then your actions will also... Um, You'll start creating abundance in your life. Creating that, yes. Yep. Yeah. Money, food, whatever will start flowing into your life because now you are interacting in the world in a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's exciting. It's a, I mean, I, I'm recognizing that it's a lot of work, right? <laughs> and that it's a journey. And it's definitely one of those things that's um, uh, one to be able to um, conceptualize, right? Mm -hmm. This idea of programming, how to reprogram our, our thoughts and our belief system, and that we have the power to do that. Um, and then it's, you know, that is an over, overall framework um, for our understanding of this process, I think is very helpful. Mm -hmm. um, the encouragement and the outlining of the steps for that journey is very helpful. Um, because once you get in it, you know, um, I feel like I'm at that phase where I can recognize that my old belief system and I can stop and um, change what I think and what I say. So then I can change that filter. It's not, um, maybe mine is not the machete path anymore. Maybe it's like a pebble path, but it's not quite a highway yet. Right, right. <laughs> um, and so I can appreciate that journey, but you know, um, understanding the, the process and sort of the steps and how to reprogram that and knowing, you know, and kind of that reassuredness that, um, the more that I recognize my belief systems and my thought process, that I can recreate that highway um, in a different direction, right? right? So then it's something that I get to choose um, to create versus like, oh, this is, you know, um, how it's been laid out because of, you know, um, my environment, my nurturing, right? Like my understanding, my worldview. Yeah. And so now I, yeah, um, have a little bit more control over that. Yeah. So I was recently um, working on uh, impatience, instant gratification, and um, kind of this like grasp, uh, graspiness. Like they're all kind of intertwined for me, like yeah. um, in business, like coming from a place of like, I need it now. The reason I wanted it now is for validation. That's it. So I could feel better. Right. Um, and that graspiness and that impatience. And that was coming from scarcity. Yeah. Right. And so kind of my process for working on that is I finally understood that was coming from scarcity and scarcity doesn't just have to do with money. Right. It could be all sorts of resources or just not being enough. And so then I started, once I saw that, I knew when I was being impatient or graspy, like, oh, that's coming from a scarcity belief, right? And I don't believe in scarcity anymore. So brain, we're not believing in that anymore. And then I would meditate on it. And like, I love Joe Dispenza and he has a meditation um, that goes along with the book, Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. Mm -hmm. and so it's like an hour long meditation and it takes you through like this subconscious reprogramming. 
so you say in the middle of meditation, like who you don't want to be anymore. And it's like, I don't want to be a person that's impatient. I don't want to be a person that wants instant gratification. And I don't want to be a person that's graspy. And then you move into being, uh, feeling, imagining yourself being a person that is abundant and sufficient. Like you have to visualize that and imagine that so you can feel that. What does a person feel like that's abundant and sufficient? Yeah. And so I worked on that and I would just do that meditation every day. And then I would tell my brain like, Hey, like we're, we are that person. We are a person that is abundant and sufficient. And so then my brain just started looking for evidence every day to prove that I was abundant and sufficient. And then I was reading books about money and abundance and sufficiency. Right. So I was trying to gather as much evidence as possible because I kind of impatient right? Like, I don't want to work for months on this belief. Like I already want to be over here on this other side of the bridge. And yeah. so I, and not everybody has the opportunity, but when I get in that, it's like, read the books, listen to the podcast, do the meditation, do the thought work, get coaching on it. So I can just gain a ton of evidence very quickly to help build that new belief system. Yeah. And it snowballs usually when you're doing that and you just keep snowballing. And then you find yourself like, oh, like I am a person that's abundant and sufficient. And now I see when I'm moving over into that energy of graspiness, mm -hmm. like, oh, nope, that's not who I'm not am anymore. That's right. the old me that used to believe in scarcity. And that's not who I am. Right. Then yeah. you're choosing. Yeah. Um, you get to uh, practice that choice. Yeah. Right? No, um, I'm moving into um, an energetic um, vibration of abundance. Yeah. And yeah. Sufficient. Yeah. And then you just kind of start recognizing the feeling. Mm -hmm. Like, can we share about your wedding planning this weekend? Sure. Sure. Like you recognize that feeling when you were doing your wedding planning of that, like scarcity rising up. Yeah. And and once you're kind of like towards the moving into the third phase, like second phase, like you, you just have to feel the emotion and experience it, right? Like you just don't have the skill set, the skill set yet to like, stop it. Like you just, you feel it, you experience it. And then you deal with it afterwards. When you're moving into that third phase, you feel it as you're talking about your wedding stuff and the budget. And you're like, Oh, I know that feeling, that feeling is scarcity. And that is not who we are anymore. Like, yeah. how are we abundant? Exactly. It did it. It crept up and I, you know, um, saw that thought going through my head. And before I said it, um, I was like, I said it, even said it out loud. I was like, Ooh, I'm coming from a place of scarcity right now. Mm -hmm. Um, because I was, yeah. Um, worrying about yeah exactly the the budget and what we were going to make fit and i was like you know um that's not where i want to be <laughs> it's not what i'm going to say that out loud because uh i don't want to be in that mindset mm -hmm. right yeah um so it was um i feel like i'm in that phase where i can recognize it and so it's a little bit um easier um but it's not i mean I, it's not second nature yet yeah right or first nature or whatever they say. Yeah. yeah. Um, it doesn't come super easy just yet. Yeah. 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 And that's okay. Like the, the journey of it is to just not quit to know, like I am becoming a person that believes in abundance. Yes. Yeah. 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 And, um, and I think a lot of my clients perfectionism, like I, this is a whole nother podcast because I do not believe perfectionism is a personality trait. I believe it's a coping me mechanism for a wound. Mm, uh, okay. I could see that. Yes. Yeah. So a lot of time, a lot of people have this perfectionist mentality, right? And so when they move into this new belief and then they find themselves in a situation that's triggered the automatic, much broader highway scarcity belief, they get discouraged. Yeah. I'm not doing this right. This isn't working. I'm never going to change. I'm never going to be different. Well, that's like saying, um, 
I don't want like, okay, but for you to not remember beliefs and not sometimes go there means that you're going to have to, uh, what do they call it when they erase a computer? Uh, re uh, reboot, reset. You're basically, yeah, you're going to have to clear the hard drive. Yeah. And that means that you have to be willing to give up any of your memories from the past. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to get rid of all your memories from your past? Do you want to not remember anything from like yesterday and back? back. Like clean slate. And most people are going to say no, right? Yeah, you have good memories and you have bad memories, but people are not going to be willing to give up their whole past life. Right. And if you don't want to ever have a belief again that you've had once, that's kind of what you have to be willing to do. Yeah. It's just like, it's part of you. It's part of the journey. Like it's part of building this new programming. So you are sometimes going to go back there and that's okay. It's just, it's one of like a whole shelf of accessible programmings that you have. True. And sometimes you subconsciously went and grabbed the wrong one, but now you have the ability to be like, oh, wait, wait, nope. This 1980s Pac-Man game, we're not using anymore. Like, yeah. We're going to grab this one and use this one. Or before you didn't even have that option. Right. You can at least see the different, yeah, options. And you can see, okay, that's where, you know, um, that I have these different programming, you know, um, uh, filters, mm -hmm. right, if you will. And so, yeah, being able to consciously be aware of that and pick out the one that you want to use or that you want to be more uh, prominent in your life um, is, yeah, I mean, to me, that's a really big deal. Yeah. <laughs> because most of us, I think, are kind of when we like create our own little world, right? Sometimes we feel like we're, we're, um, don't have a lot of options, yeah. right? Yeah. Or you kind of feel like, oh, this is the way it's always been, this way it's always going to be, yep. you know? Um, yeah. And so by, um, just helping people through that journey and saying, no, no, look, you can go back and, you know, revisit those shelves and you can go back and see, you know, different situations and events and appreciate, um, them for what they were, but they don't have to shadow you into the future. Yeah. Absolutely. You want something different. Yeah. And I mean, this all can be done on and on your own. Right. But like, this is where I see the value of a coach so much. Mm, I do too. Right? It's like every week, like imagine checking in with me and being like, okay, where are we at on the scarcity beliefs? Because your brain has spent that week either gaining evidence for one or gaining evidence for the other or gaining evidence to disprove one. And so then you have that coach is just this unbiased person right? Yeah. It's just there to hold space and listen to you and point out like, it feels like that belief, like you've gathered evidence for that belief and just how to like, it's not, I don't like to call it accountability, but it is this person that helps you take off the blinders yeah, and see like, oh crap, I am feeding into that belief. Um, I think it's, I think coaching is very helpful um, because when you have that um, when your brain is is finding that evidence, right, and you've got that filter, mm -hmm. and if it has become sort of that that second nature, sometimes we need that um, that mirror, right, if you will, of like, hey, do you under, you know, like, do you recognize that what you're saying is still within that yes. wheelhouse of that thought process? Because if we're only, um, I think it takes a certain level of um, cognition to be able to kind of analyze that in our brain and to be able to recognize it because at the beginning um and throughout the process uh if it's it feels if, all true everything does, you're feels thinking true. feels like factual truth until you have someone being like yeah that's not factual truth <laughs> like, yeah somebody to, to challenge that right yeah. um and so and our brain um was built to our brain is created to solve problems right um our brain often tries to go into this like fix it mode mm -hmm. um and sometimes that's helpful and sometimes that's not helpful <laughs> but um to work with a coach to be able to um be able to just question right and kind of 
um, be like, well, let's, you know, dive in a little bit more. Let's figure out, right. Is that thought process? Um, what do you recognize is happening or what are you saying to yourself in that thought process? Right? Yes. And like, I'll give a quick example, like my coach last week, cause I'm supposed to be keeping this calendar. Yes. Right. Like that's how I calendar my life so I can be productive. And like, I resist that stupid thing. I'm like, yep, nope, not doing that. And it'll pop up. And I'm like, I haven't done anything on my calendar other than what I committed to doing for other people. And I don't do what I commit to do for myself. Uh, right. And like, I knew it was an issue, but like, she was like, mm, this is like, why aren't you keeping your commitments to yourself? Why is it, why are you not important? Because there's a programming running back there. This behavior of not um, doing your calendar is a symptom of a belief system back there that you're not even aware of. And then I dig into it and it's like, oh, I don't believe I have what it takes to be successful. So of course I don't want to, like, I don't believe in the calendar because I'm like, this stuff doesn't matter. Like I can't, I'm not going to be successful. Yeah. And I don't even have those conscious thoughts. All I have is like, I don't want to do what's on the calendar. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I think that's a great example because that's often what we see, right? Like um, those actions, right. That we do on a regular basis. Um, we know that they're related to our belief system and our thoughts. And so if we're not always able to recognize those thoughts and beliefs, um, we can see the actions right. um, in our daily life. So we can start there to kind of go back and figure out yeah, yeah. Um, what yeah. to change. Yeah. All right, friends, we hope this is helpful. Um, we will see you guys next week. And if always, if you have questions or you just want to connect, you can find us on Instagram at Thrive and Align Healing um, or Carmen has her Instagram. It's, what's your Instagram? Um, it's actually Good Tree and H for yeah. Good Tree yes and my instagram is kimberly jarman coaching so just dm us if you have any questions and we'd love to help you guys yeah reach out